All right. Thanks, everyone, for attending tonight. Our crowd is sparse, but that's good. We're glad you're here. Will you call the roll, please? Farmer? Here. Henning? Here. Gorman? Here. Merkel? Here. Kelly? Here. Bachman? Here. And Stevens? Here. We do have a public hearing tonight. I think we have enough time to maybe do the clerk's report. First, before you, you have the work session minutes of November 7th, 2024. I'll move for approval. Second. Second. Motion to approve as written by Mr. Gorman, second by Ms. Kelly. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that's unanimous. And you also have before you the council meeting minutes of November 7th, 2024. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Gorman to accept as written, uh, second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that that is unanimous also. And we'll go ahead with the public hearing. So uh, I want to um, explain the uh, meeting procedures quickly. Uh, it goes like this. Uh, staff will present the case. Um, the council members um, will have a chance to ask any questions for staff. Um, I'll ask for a motion to open the floor to public comment. Um, then uh, any public comments in favor or in opposition of the application. I'll then ask for a motion to close the floor to public comment. I'll ask the staff if they'd like to respond to any of the public comments. And I'll ask council if they have any additional questions. Then I will ask for a motion to recommend approval, approval with conditions or disapproval of the request. And lastly, a motion to close the public hearing. So for anyone in the room, anyone present that may uh, want to respond with the questions or comments will need to be sworn in. And who do we have? Only one? <laughs> All right. Will you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give to this council is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say, I do. Okay, thank you. You're duly sworn in. Right. Good evening, council. This pertains to zoning code amendments to Clayton Codified Ordinance 1141.11. Planning Commission had a public hearing and meeting on October 28th, 2024, and this case comes before you on November 21st, 2024. Uh, so Clayton Codified Ordinance 1141.11 is violations remedies section. The current text of this is before you here. I'm happy to read it if anybody would like me to. Uh, but we're mainly focused on that last sentence there, um, that each and every day during which such illegal location, erection, construction, reconstruction, enlargement, change, and or maintenance, if use continues, may be deemed a separate offense. And the suggested revision of this section would change that word may to shall. Uh, the reason for the recommended revision, the city has received complaints of continued violations of zoning code. This would strengthen the penalties to achieve compliance with the zoning code to encourage prompt correction of violations. The language change in Clayton Codified Ordinance 1141.11c from may to shall allows each day a violation continues after the day after the, day the violation is cited to be counted as a separate third degree misdemeanor offense rather than a single third degree misdemeanor offense. This would also enhance the public health, safety, and welfare of the city. The third degree misdemeanor penalties in Ohio are up to 60 days in jail and up to a $500 fine. Planning Commission recommends the suggested revision to Clayton Codified Ordinance 1141.11 Section C Staff recommends this suggested revision to Planning Commission at the October 28, 2024 Planning Commission meeting, and Planning Commission motioned to recommend the revision to City Council at the October 28, 2024 Planning Commission meeting as well. If Council agrees, it will have two readings of an ordinance to make the recommended revision to Clayton Codified Ordinance 1141.11, Section C.
I have one question. Um, so I, um, I think it's very important that we make these changes, but I also want to kind of walk a fine line. So if we have someone that is in violation of, you know, something, whatever it is, and they are actively working on it, um, is that something that we take into consideration? Or? It absolutely yeah. is. So if there is a violation and the person is in contact with the city and they've said, hey, I need until next Saturday or next month or whatever to get this resolved, the city absolutely does. So we don't give them a time frame like 30 days? No, no, there is. No, there are. There okay. are time frames, but okay. if they need something outside of that, the city is always working with the resident. I think we should work with them to some degree, but at the same time, the violations that have been going on on my ward have been going on basically all year, mm -hmm. and there's no remedy, and I think homeowners are lying when they say that a solution is going to be made because nothing has been done. And I've constantly got calls on the same property over and over, and I think that he has maybe stated that something's going on, same with another property. Um, and they say that they're working on it, but nothing is being done. So I want to be careful with it. I don't. I, I think giving them a time frame, like, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and I mean, I think thirty days, but then maybe not extending it. Like there needs to be there. We need to stay on top of this because Oakwood and other. I don't think Inglewood would let it go on forever, and I don't want to see that happen anymore because there are some properties where they totally push it to the extreme and they look really bad because they know they can get away with it. Would this resolve the issue of things going to the courts in Vandalia that just seem to linger? That's the hope. I mean, I know Martinez had conversation with um, the prosecutor over there that said that this will help in that. Because there's been a couple of properties like on um, Union Road that had been an issue in the past and it was always going back to try to cite and getting something done, and it just seemed like there was always a series of excuses for something not being done. Even potentially the if there was a, a nuisance issue, such as you mentioned last week, mm -hmm. same sort of thing, that if something is not resolved, that rather than being, well, let's just sit back and wait, this would be prompting enforcement action. And the reason I'm asking this is because you know when looking at this head as far as the the planning board uh, when they voted, you know there was one person who dissented, mm -hmm. and I guess Mr. Muncy is a lawyer, yes. and I didn't know if he had a, a legal reason for not supporting it or or he had other apprehensions or what what his issues might have been that might have or forget that is there a downside for doing this for the standpoint it puts us in a precarious spot well sure I mean it doesn't put us in a precarious spot it could potentially put a resident in a precarious spot because there's technically no limit on the number of violations they could have at that point right if it's shallow if every day it's a violation every day it's a violation now, I know mr. Caldwell has told um, law director Dylan that four I think is what he said was his limit but that's prosecutorial discretion so should mr. Caldwell no longer be there someone could come in and it could be a hundred Right, and there, I suppose there is a potential that a judge could put someone in jail for 60 days. Do I think that would happen? No, but could it happen? Yes. The side could be is just having someone looking at this could be enough action to encourage someone to be more prompt and essentially resolving a problem and not letting it linger for months, two months, a year's time. Well, that's period. the hope. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I obviously. I never talked to Mr. Muncie about this. I did not attend the meeting. Mr. Muncie obviously is a friend of mine. Um, but I appreciate Prosecutor Caldwell for working with Amanda and Martina to say this is what's best for the city of Clayton because that's what matters to me as a council member. This puts a big tool in um, the zoning department's mm -hmm. toolkit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking with with him, the prosecutor, he did not have when yeah. we were discussing this language. And, and I've seen that language repeatedly mm -hmm. in different zoning codes that each day an offense occurs is treated as a separate offense. So I don't see it as anything unusual. And in speaking with him, neither did he. Thank you.
Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying from this, in the past times and listening to things that have come forward and things not getting done, it's because <laughs> there's always been some <laughs> reason why they didn't have to do something and, and it got delayed again. Mm -hmm. And there was a desire in the past that being able to do something more forceful to force action. And if, if this appears to be what that might be at least a first step forward in doing. Yeah, but people have an option of cleaning up a mess, not letting it continue. I, I'd propose having leniency with demonstrated progress. Yes. I think that, that's that, probably well, the, that's my point, basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how we operate anyway. The, the specific cases that Mr. Henning is talking about, that person has been cited to court, court multiple times. Yeah. In our past, we've always done it that yeah. way. So. Yeah. I move we open to public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been properly motioned and seconded that we open the um, floor to public comment. Is there anyone who wants to comment? I move we close the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been properly. <laughs> nobody here. Yeah. Uh, motioned and seconded. Later. Don't talk now. <laughs> um, I did. Yeah. Tina. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. There's no, uh, there's no other public comments for or against. Any other, any other questions or comments from the council? Are we all good? Okay. Is there a motion to close? Motion the hearing? to close. Motion to close by Mr. Merkel. Second, second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. The public hearing is closed. Thank you. Okay, and we have no old business tonight. We have a, a couple of pieces of new business. Um, will you read the first ordinance, please? Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Yes. We did have one more resolution we were gonna request mm -hmm. uh, a motion and vote to add to the agenda, agenda and that's resolution R1124-58. I believe you have copies of that in front of you, which is mm -hmm. a resolution repealing a prior resolution that was adopted in October and replacing it with this current resolution in order to uh, submit applications to the MVRPC for CMAQ funds. The change in that was to, this is related to the Hoke Road widening project uh, from Winger Road. The previous resolution said from Winger Road to National. This now is from Winger Road to Springview Lane at Gran Villas. And if the city manager or Randy wants to uh, add a little more information to that, I'll let them explain. Do we need any a short explanation, maybe? Uh, so whenever we looked at this project as a whole, it did go from uh, Winger Road to um, National Road. Um, and talking with NVRPC and ODOT, we had looked at doing it phase one and phase two. So when we submitted the application, we just submitted the entire application from Winger to National. Um, now they are telling us that it's probably better for us to parse that out. And the logical term and I was at Springview Lane at Grand Villas. So we need to modify our application, which we already did, but now we need the resolution to match the modified application so it goes from Springview to Winger. Okay, so I move to amend oh, the- I, I'm sorry, I have one, just one more question. So what about the rest? <laughs> well, it's just like the first phase, so we're doing it in phases. Yeah. And each of these phases need to be able to stand alone. So should, for some reason, we never complete the project from Springview Lane to uh, National Road, the city would not be on the hook for having to return any money because we didn't complete the project. Do, do we need to? Okay, sorry. So I, we just a motion to add it to I the I move to amend the agenda to add resolution number R112458. Second. It's been properly motioned and seconded to add the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that. I, that's I'll move for the resolution. Well, we're not there yet. <laughs> Through it all. Okay, so we have some ordinances. We read the first ordinance, please. Ordinance O 112421, an ordinance approving, rejecting, or modifying the recommendation of the Planning Commission to amend Clayton Codified Ordinance Section 1141.11C. I move to approve. Second. It's been properly motioned and seconded. All in favor of adopting the ordinance as written? Aye. 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 All opposed? 
Okay, let the record show that's unanimous. Uh, will you read the second ordinance, please? Ordinance 0 11 an ordinance to confirm acceptance of specified right-of-way dedication at Wenger Village, Section 3, recorded plat 240-21, instrument number 2023-00001100 with Montgomery County Recorder's Office. I've got a question on that. You're going to know I'm a stickler. If it references Exhibit A, I'm looking for Exhibit A. And I, I didn't see, I, where is this, the location? It is off of Winger Road. So cilantro, do you know where, cilantro, parsley, basically the Spice Girls, it's back there. It's the section three that we finished, or that they just completed. Um, and I apologize that the attachment isn't there. But it's just a map of the road, and when it goes to the website, it will be there. Okay. We'll move for approval. Second. Motion to approve. As written by Mr. Henning, second by Mr. Farmer. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that's unanimous. Will you read the third res or third ordinance, please? Ordinance 0 11 24 23, an ordinance approving and adopting a thoroughfare plan for the city of Clayton, Ohio. I'll move for approval. Second. I, I got a couple questions. Okay. Based on the presentation that they gave, I mean, by adopting this, we're just adopting the plan. Yes, they, we're just adopting the plan. It's just a guidebook for the city council. But there were some errors, per se, mm -hmm. because they, for instance, um, Phillipsburg Union Road is designated within Bean and Clayton, and that section, one section is not. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that, does that present an issue or problem? It does not. And the other thing being the, the non-existent roadways that show up mm -hmm. on the drawings as well under their futuristic proposal for mm -hmm. roadway areas, which are not in existence now. Correct. Is, do we need to make any designation or identification to say those, those roadways, those passageways ways do not exist? I mean, the same thing show up on the, on the active transport, right. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want someone to look at this and they get a, the perception that we're going to be putting a, a roadway Paralleling sweet potato halfway between, you know, Winger and, and, and National Road, mm -hmm. where one does not exist now. That I think that on that particular page, when you look at that, I think the um, the key down at the bottom shows that it is a proposed roadway or that a future planning, and that it's not current. Well, it's not part of Plan Clayton, but it's no, it's no, a map that they put together. I'm just like again, it's one of those futuristic things, mm -hmm. so, you know. If someone sees this or we're proposing to put somewhere on the line, put a roadway in here. Right. And, or a, a pathway in through here, mm -hmm. because this is what they proposed and approved back in 2024. Mm -hmm. But since these areas are not there now, right. in theory, it probably really shouldn't be there to show that there's something. I would disagree with you. I, I so would disagree also. Whether well, or not that actually ever happens, I mean, the purpose of the plan was to show us what could potentially happen. What if the growth patterns that we are continuing to see continue what we could potentially have to do or what we should do and that's the purpose of that if like i said if you look i'm pretty sure i don't have it in front of me but the key that is at the bottom of that page shows that those are proposed roads not actual existing infrastructure and i and i have i have no problem i'm just from the standpoint of not having confusion in the future of someone saying something about why did you put that there mm -hmm. that the explanation is that these were all draft proposals, yes. not something that was going to be firmly implemented. Yes. So there's no in, there is no at this time intent to put pathways, roadways, bikeways in these areas there, but they do not currently exist. This is just on the map. Well, I mean, I think it allows us to do that. You know, it, well, or you know. So I'll tell you. Currently, we have we don't have a thoroughfare plan, but we rely on Montgomery County's thoroughfare plan. So the plan that you have before you that you're voting on this evening is specific to our area, to the city of Clayton, and to the general larger area. And what's shown there is potentially what could happen. Just like with Plan Clayton is potentially what could happen. Okay. I guess my, my only thought to that is proposed. And that needs to be um, directed more and plain writing proposed. I mean, that would clear up maybe questions in the future mm -hmm. if it wasn't there, but it's all proposed. So that's the difference. 
I think there may be some concerns that people would see this and they may want to say something about it. And in the future, though, it becomes much harder to deal with if it gets some funding behind it. You know, all of a sudden it's getting funded and, oh, I don't want that. If we're, if, if we are to the point where the projects that we have up north and that we integrate the thoroughfare plan and the projects are getting funded, they're probably, that cat's already out of the bag. I mean, we are already marching down that road. And I would think that if there are people who are adamantly opposed to those things, which they very well may be, that the time for them to come and express those thoughts would be prior to us applying for the funding or prior to us laying out those projects. Any other questions or comments on that? Is there a motion? Who, who made the motion? I, at this point, forget. I <laughs> I'll move for approval. Tina. 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 Okay, it's been properly yeah. it's been properly motioned yeah. and seconded. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Let the record show that that is adopted unanimously. Okay, we have three resolutions tonight. Will you read the first? Resolution R112456, a resolution approving revisions to the bylaws of the First Suburbs Consortium of Dayton, Ohio Council of Governments. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion to approve the resolution as written by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that's unanimous. We read the second resolution, please. R 112457, a resolution authorizing the finance director to request the county auditor to make advance payments into the Clayton account. Mr. Schweitz. I need your approval to fill out this form with the resolution attached uh, so we can get advances from the property taxes throughout the year instead of just twice when the uh, settlements occur. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion to approve as written by Ms. Kelly, second by Mr. Henning. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that that's unanimous also. And the final resolution, the one that we added to our agenda tonight, we read that. Resolution R112458, a resolution repealing resolution number R102453, adopted October 3rd, 2024, and replacing same with the present resolution number R112458, authorizing the submittal and application to the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission for congestion mitigation air quality funds for phase 2A of the Hoke Road widening project from Winger Road to Springview Lane at Grand Villas. Move for approval. Second. Motion to approve the resolution as written by Mr. Henning, second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, let the record show that that's unanimous also. And that concludes the new business for tonight. Um, our next item on our agenda is our city manager's report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A few items for you this evening. First, I want to let you know that we have an opportunity. Um, I know that we changed credit card vendor, point of sale vendors what, two years ago, a year ago? Um, but we have an opportunity to realize an even larger savings. Um, at, so this year we spent about $37,000 still in credit card fees, just from people processing credit cards. Uh, we were approached by, I'm sorry, uh, Payrock? That's the, yeah. They're with First Financial. Okay, associated with First Financial. And they are going to charge us a flat rate every month for credit card fees, so it'll be a total of $2,084 for next year on credit card fees. I didn't think that there would be any objection to moving over. The only thing I will tell you is we will have um, just we're required by law to put both what the cash price would be and what the price would be with credit card fees. So residents can make a decision on which one they wanna do or anyone who comes in, resident, non-resident, someone paying a fee or a bill, that there would be a credit card fee charged if there were a credit card transaction and a cash payment would just be the flat rate. So is that a percentage fee? It is what it, it's like three point five, yeah. Four percent. Yeah. Is that the only company that approached us with the same with that kind of with deal, that yes. kind of deal? Mm -hmm. Okay. I knew Heartland was. That's who we're with right now. Okay. I've worked with um, First Financial on two, in, on two different other things outside of this, and they they've been really good for um, I, I I don't know what the word is like specialty. Mm -hmm type things like this um, I, I've had good good results with them so so we'll make that transition um, just as a reminder that we'll be closed on Thursday November 28th and Friday November 29th in the observance for the Thanksgiving holiday um, 
if you'll recall, when we um, didn't have the levy passed the last time, we moved to a hard billing system in September for medic calls. Um, in speaking with the fire chief, you know, we were talking about whether or not to continue that. The recommendation is that we no longer continue hard billing for residents or people who are inside the collaborative, but continue to hard bill for those who are outside. So if we go to mutual aid to Trotwood or to Brookville or Vandalia or wherever else we go. Yeah, so uh, when we passed that, it, like I said, we wanted to try to capture some of those dollars. Uh, so the recommendation after me and the city manager talked, uh, like we said, this isn't a money grab. Uh, even though we're not gonna receive money until 2026 off this, we didn't discuss that at that point. Uh, but since the levy did pass, w my recommendation is to actually stop hard billing as of December 31st. So next year we will not hard bill. I'm not saying they're not gonna get bills from this year, <laughs> Uh, but no, anybody who goes on a medic call starting January 1st of 2025 will be hard billed. So basically we're going to realize one year of hard billing and stop except for those mutual aid responses that are outside of our city or outside of the collaborative. Uh, again, this wasn't a money grab. We're not trying to scare a scare tactic or try to get as much money as we can. It was something that we need to put in place just to a stopgap as much as possible. And, and we don't need that. And it wasn't budget. That revenue is not in 2025's budget. So. That's just our recommendation. Appreciate that. Yeah, saying it's easy enough to just stop hard billing. Chief just will no longer send the bills from residents to the uh, Ohio Attorney General's office. Um, the next item I have for you, there is a draft ordinance uh, concerning tree stumps um, before you. So what I'll tell you, there are a couple of cities that we talked to that do have tree stumps considered rubbish, so they have to be removed. Uh, the city of Vandalia has it if the tree stump is actually pulled from the ground that it needs to be removed is considered rubbish. The city of Inglewood considers a tree stump rub rubbish whether it's in the ground or pulled, it's just rubbish. Uh, what I do wanna tell you though is that the city of Clayton roughly spends, I don't know, around $12,000 every year in removing trees. And then on top of that, if we were to require stump grinding and removal, it would be an additional $713, so additional $1,000 per tree that we remove. And um, you know, you'd have to think that those costs are also going to be passed along to the resident. So when you're contemplating whether or not you wanna require people to grind stumps after they cut down a tree, even if it's cut down privately, and it's not the city ordering them to cut it down, they would then be required to grind the stump. For the additional charge i would put this on the agenda tonight if everybody would be fine with it i think it's needed if inglewood does it well, I, I i mean when this was mentioned the last time i mean for kind of short conversation driving around neighborhoods and looking to see who has a potential tree stump in their front yard that's just from what you can see in their front yard are we going to start inspecting every single property to see if you have a tree stump well so my thought would be, one, it would just be if we were ordering people that they had to cut down a tree, that it would need to be ground down at that point. Um, but, you know, there are a number of people who do just remove a tree and just leave the stump. That is just there, or they use it for art. I know there's someone in the neighborhood over here that has a little gnome house built into their tree stump. Um, I think I would be fine with Amanda's recommendation of moving forward anything that has been ordered to cut down or anything um, in the right of way that's cut down, the stump should be removed. I look at this, I mean, who would you say it was Vandalia has a where if it's- If it, it's it, removed, if it's been pulled from the ground. Yeah, I mean, I, I consider, you know, that, I mean, you know, I don't know the dictionary, for, for, you know, what they define as rubbish, but I mean, that's something that's out of the ground and, you know, on, top of of the land whereas something that you know i mean i've seen plenty of tree stumps that have been somewhere for a long time there after one was cut down fell down something like that and i mean is is that something really one in the ground is, is that a tree stump is that really something that's a big deal well i can tell you um in my five years now that I've been here, I have never received a phone call about a tree stump. No one has ever called and complained about. I've had people call and complain about dead trees in their neighbor's yard that we've ordered to have removed. I've never had anybody call about a tree stump. I know Mr. Henning got a complaint from a resident about tree stumps in the city, and that's what spurred this, is that he received a complaint. But I've never received a complaint. I don't think Mr. Sanders has ever received a complaint. 
about tree stumps. So your recommendation is the right of way, for example, if, if it's in the right of way. So my recommendation it. would be to leave it alone, uh, to just leave it as is, but that's council's ultimate decision on what you want to do. So what about um, what about these people? Because I really don't. I'm kind of neutral on this. For one thing, I hate the look of a tree stump sticking up in someone's yard. I wouldn't do it myself, but um, I, I don't see that as a big thing uh, in our a big problem in our. Because since our last meeting, I drove around. And I was looking for them also. But I see more than that. I see things like when people cut down trees, they have the tree cut up laying in their yard, you know, those kind of things. I mean, how far do, my question is, how far do we go? Well, that's already in the code that that has to be removed. They can't just pile it up in the yard. Unless they're using it as firewood and they have it tucked away, but they just can't pile it up in the yard. And, and does this all, does, and this is only front yards? Or would this? So this is yeah. just as yard. So it'd be front yard, side yard, backyard. I know a lot of people, including family members who've had tree stumps for a while, like in backyards, out of the view. I mean, that. Yeah, or that, what happens yeah, that, if that, you have yeah. a wooded lot, you know, for instance? I mean, you know, what happens? Yeah. Do we go out to your house yeah, and say, hey? Yeah, and I, 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 I know it's, it, you know, we have to do, we have to put in here what what's right. I mean, that would kind of give Daryl the right to just, you know, look on any property here, whether it's quarter acre like mine or. You know, mul you know, multiple acres here to say, oh, you got any tree stumps? I'm not saying he would do that, right. but yeah. Can we still have an awful lot of rural area in this city to to. A lot of BZA visits about that, I guess. <laughs> uh, my my can I guess I was there a way to have code enforcement use some judgment on is it unsightly you know is it half out of the ground you know if they tried to clean up make it look nice you let it go well you know so the only hesitation i would have daryl does exercise discretion he does the hesitation i would have with that if you know i'm brendan's neighbor i don't like the fact that he cut down the tree in his backyard i think it's unsightly brendan doesn't think it's unsightly daryl comes out and says it's not unsightly and then you know i'm in the spot where i'm just going to keep calling and just keep calling about a tree stump in the back end. Maybe. Like I said, we've never received a call about a tree stump. I've, nobody has ever called and complained. Um, you know, the suggestion that I could make is that we could just put this aside for now. We can continue to monitor. If we do get an influx of calls about tree stumps, it is absolutely something that could be brought back to the table. I have a more concern that trees are either half dead, presses of dying that present themselves a hazard Right, and those are already have had those problems exist in this city. Yeah, those are already in the code that they have to be removed. Actually, my, what you reminded me of was that actually, after a tornado, if this was in. I would have been in violation for about two years because I had one in the back and a small birch in, in the front, and they were small stumps, but they don't look. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have any complaints. Yeah, but I would have technically been in violation. So let's take let's take a straw vote here. Um, table or yeah, table's fine. Ta table it for now. Everybody good? That's what we'll do. We'll just um, we'll just hold on to it for now. I'll just monitor whether or not. I'll ask Daryl if he gets any complaints or if Mr. Sanders gets complaints about tree stumps. And if we do, we can bring it back. My next door neighbor had a tree stump in their backyard, and they have a privacy fence. But I have a deck that looks down in their yard, and I, I, I hated that, you know. And he finally ground it out, but it was, it was like that probably five years, and I just, I, I don't like that either. But again, I, I didn't say go over there and say something to him about it or anything, you know. It's, it, it's his yard. It's his yard. Uh, the next item I have for you is the electrical aggregation program. So the Miami Valley Communications Council electrical aggregation program has been in effect now since September of 2023. Um, on November 13th, the NVCC group um, met to discuss the program. The rate received for the current term is 0. Or 0. 0.0657 kilowatt hours with the green option of 0. 0.697 kilowatt hours and the resident has to opt into the green option. It's not just automatic. Um, the City of Clayton residential and small business customers who are enrolled in the program saved an estimated uh, $1 million on their electrical bills. 
for being by being part of the program. And that was from September of 23 to September of 24. Uh, the program as a whole has saved residents and small businesses and all of the member communities $21 million um, for that same time period. So Clayton's information is attached to the city manager report. The current agreement expires in December of 25. The MVCC group voted to go out to bid in late winter, early spring for the next rate. Palmer Energy, who is our consultant, um, estimates that the rate is going to come in higher than this year's, so it'll be 0 0.093 kilowatt hour or kilowatts per hour is what they're estimating, uh, which is estimated to be lower than the general market. And it also should be noted that even if residents are enrolled in the program, if they're able to go out and find a better rate, they can drop off at any time or rejoin at any time. So there's no obligation, even if they're enrolled right now, if the rate goes up, that they have to stay with the NVCC group or with the City of Clayton's Agriation Program. Are there any questions on that? Is it about a two-year contract? Yes, it's two. Um, there is an opportunity for gas aggregation. So if you'll remember, the electrical aggregation was spurred by a resident who was very interested in the program. There wasn't a lot of interest in the gas at the time because it's basically an insurance policy. There's no guarantees of what rates are going to be. Um, MVCC does have now a gas aggregation program. If the city of Clayton wants to be part of that, we need to put um, basically to the ballot, just like we did for electrical. Um, and once we do that, then we would go through the process just like we did with electrical and hold the public hearings and have an opportunity for residents to voice their opinions, and then we can enroll in the program. Um, they did offer to come in and do a work session for council if you'd like. If you don't think that's necessary and you just want to put it to ballot, that's also fine. I would be fine putting it to the May ballot. Well, I mean, what's the downside? There's no downside. There's no downside, really. If people don't want to enroll, it, it will be opt out again. But if people don't want to enroll, they don't have to. I don't see any issue with that, if it, especially if it can save right. the money, okay. you know. OK, so we'll do that. Um, the BZA has a open vacant seat. We have had two applicants so far. The um, advertisement is open until the end of the month. We need to appoint someone. Um, in dis well, in January. We don't have a BZA meeting in December, correct, Ellen? Yeah, so we need to appoint someone by January. Uh, we've had two applicants. I will put those out to council for the next meeting. Um, and as always, you can always bring your own applicants if you so choose. So uh, how, long will, how long will we accept the applicants? And Through the end of the month. Okay. The, yeah, the end of November. Okay. Um, the active transportation plan, we held the first open house at Janus Ward on Thursday, November 14th at 6 p.m. We had 12 residents who showed up, which is a pretty good turnout. The next one is Tuesday, December 3rd, 2024 at 6 p.m. at Meadowbrook. So have people come out um, and take a look at what's going on. Um, for the planning commission, um, I had informed council that we would have the um, Winger Village or Warner Village before council at the December 19th meeting. That meeting has actually been, um, the planning commission meeting, I'm sorry, has been moved to December 16th, so that will not be before council until the January 16th meeting. Um, and that is all I have for you this evening. Um, there what is one other item. As long as there are no substantive changes to the budget that council would like to see, I am comfortable with bringing that to council at the December 5th meeting along with the wages for uh, staff at that meeting as well. With that, there would be nothing of substance really on the Thursday, December 19th meeting. So we would not need to hold that meeting if council did not want to. Okay, any questions or comments? Yeah, is uh, Channel 6 still in business? What is Channel 6? Well, that's oh, it is, it is. <laughs> if you. <laughs> <laughs> it just hangs out at the top of my manager's report. So the city council meeting, city council meetings can be viewed live by following the links posted on the city um, Clayton social media sites. Previous council meetings may be viewed by visiting the city of city's website and clicking agendas, minutes, or viewed on cable channel six on Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday after the meeting, Saturday at 8.30 a.m. and repeated the following Monday at 10.30 p.m. Then again um, at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. And I do know that because my sister and her four boys like to watch our meetings, so. Well, I tried to watch it, and, and our Channel 6 went off again. Oh, okay. Uh, it was on for four or five days and had the city of Raymond on for four or five days. 
I don't even know where the city of Raymond is at. I don't care either, by the way. But but now it's just blank again. Everything else is working, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Unless you have something else. Anything else from anyone? Okay. Thank you. Good job. So the next item is visitors' comments, and we have two visitors. Either of you would like to speak? They both, they both check no. But Mr. Earl. Sixty-four twenty Levon Court, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we're uh, in the motion with Elaine. Is we're setting our goals out for next year. Uh, so far as what what we're going to do at Meadowbrook, uh, we only set one date. It is not confirmed yet by Willie, but uh, we're looking at uh, February the twenty twenty-first, having a. Uh, what we call a line dancing, hold down line dancing. Boots and hats, and uh, the bar will be open till uh, one hour, or half hour before it closes, it starts early, and will be over at 7.30 or 8 o'clock. But we're, with Elaine, we're working on putting back a lot of the items that we didn't have last year. And I want to thank the citizens of Clayton for voting for s number six. That's a very important and it's a great deal and, and all your help and all of this help over here. So thank them very much. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Earl, anything? Nope. All right. Appreciate you both coming. Uh, council. Um, comments, Mr. Farmer, we'll start with you. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, Harmits, thank you for coming out tonight. <laughs> um, just a few things. Uh, just uh, for the Planning Commission, uh, being moved to the 16th, I'm sort of glad that happened. You know, who wants to really spend, start your Thanksgiving week at Planning Commission? But it's still going on, and what they're talking about is important. I do appreciate the efforts that they put in on that. Um, I also wanted to bring up the uh, active transportation plan meeting at, at uh, Meadowbrook on the 3rd of December. Uh, interesting exercise. Get, uh, it encourages some resident participation on what's going on with the city. And uh, wish uh, all of you a happy Thanksgiving. That's all I've got. Thank you, sir. Mr. Henning. Good evening. Uh, we had a water main break on Skylark, and they did patch it. Um, is, is it finalized, you know, Randy, or...? They'll redo it in the spring. Okay. They will redo it this year. Okay. Thank you for that because I did have uh, quite a few residents that live off Tiplehurst and on Skylark, obviously, ask about it because I didn't think the patch work was that great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I did want to hit on, I did discuss last meeting about the uh, windfall provision that I do hope um, is repealed at some point during this next Congress or administration. And, you know, um, I did have some residents say that they heard me discuss it. And I would just like to say again, I am very hopeful that Congress does something with this because over one, so the number is over 1.7 million Ohioans are affected by having two thirds of their social security um, withheld from them if they get their public pension, whether it be teachers or us and OPERS. So um, I think we need to continue to um, let Congressman Turner and our representatives know that we have residents that are affected by this and we would like to see them do something about it during the uh, 119th Congress that starts in January. <coughs> I wanted to um, you know, thank the city manager for the aggregation savings and Elaine Herrick for bringing this up to us back in maybe 2022 or whenever she brought it to our attention. And I'm excited that we're able to to get the gas aggregation also done pending a May ballot, which um, is being rumored by the state for a statewide issue for May. I uh, wanted to wish everybody here a happy Thanksgiving. And um, in regards to Northmont Fish saying they need extra assistance, if anyone is watching this and able to contribute, uh, reach out to Northmont Fish, please. 
they had an increase of over 200 families who have asked for assistance this holiday season. So if you are so able, anything I'm sure is appreciated. And it is a phenomenal organization that helps out our community tremendously. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gorman. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. Greg. Uh, mirror everything that's been said at this point. Um, also want to congratulate those new employees for the collaborative that they had their swearing in ceremony the other night. And I'm sorry, I didn't remember everybody's name, but <laughs> there were representatives from each of the communities involved and you know, we were being well served. So thank you for the efforts for <coughs> that you put forward in terms of making that all work. Getting someone who's 21 years of age to start in the fire service and then realizing how long it's been since I've been 21. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you, sir. Tina. I just want to tell everyone thank you for the budget. Every The department heads, line by line, that Kevin went to talk to, the department heads and Amanda for a great job. Kevin, you do a phen uh, phenomenal job every year. It's proven by the awards that you get. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Bachman. Evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, a lot of echoing of some things said earlier, but um, yeah, thank you to you know, Mr. Schweitzer uh, and, and the staff. Uh, and I know, you know with the levy, it, it made a condensed time period uh, of you working on the budget. But um, you know, thankfully, we, uh, you know, I, I joke with Kevin most years of the uh, Parks and Recreation show of send him the, uh, you know, slash the budget, uh, funny internet memes. And I didn't last year because we actually had to do it. And uh, it's not funny when it's reality. Uh, but uh, uh, but was right back at it this year. So, um, you know, glad in, in looking, you know, that the future is, is very, is much more stable. Um, just at the current numbers here and, and with potential growth e even more. So, uh, you know, thank you to, to everyone involved in that. Um, also reiterate, uh, it was a nice ceremony last evening over in Inglewood for the fire collaborative, uh, was a, you know, and seeing how all three of those departments really do function w well together. Um, and speaking with, uh, people from the other communities, uh, a lot of them were also even saying like, Hey, we were nervous about your levy. So I think that really shows the, um, you know, how, how valued our fire department is, uh, not just to the city of Clayton, but to the Northmont community as a whole. So, you know, thank you guys very much for that. Uh, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. Um, everything's been said, you know, that I wanted to say thanks to Kevin and, and your staff and everyone on the budget. I mean, I know that's a big thing every year. So uh, all the department heads and everyone who contributed appreciate that work. Uh, I want, want to go back um, to the levy. Um, again, I appreciate everyone, you know, everyone's support on that. We had a lot of work done by our employees here. Um, it, you know, in the city and appreciate every one of them. I think um, someone told me we hit it, we're able to contact every house. I don't know how if we got every single house, but I know we got 99% of the homes. So I appreciate that. Um, the other thing about the levy I just wanted to throw out there, um, again, it's, you know, all of us are involved in other things, but I've had a lot of comments in a, on a regional level that people congratulated me, but it was really the you know obviously the city in passing the levy. This you know there's not a lot of levies that pass anymore. I mean people are you know yeah they're it, it's tough to get levies passed. So I'm very fortunate. All of us are very fortunate that um, that happened. We were able to do that. Uh, the other thing, it's really small thing, but as you know, I'm shallow and visual and all that, but I like the pump uh, cover at Meadowbrook because, that, again, that's one of the things that I can't help driving in looking at that thing. It does. It looks great. The yeah. uh, students from NBC or CTC did that. So I think, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that, again, that's one of those things that bugs me when I drive in there. I'm like, well, why don't we do something with that pump house or that pump? So it's a good job on that. Last thing I want to um, just revisit quickly, our favorite subject of leaf pickup. Um, 
you know, I, uh, I, I didn't, I was kind of neutral on the whole idea. I, I wasn't um, adamant that we do it or, or I was okay if we didn't do the one pass. Um, I think um, I'm glad that we did the one pass. It, it got some of the leaves off, and, and, and obviously we got some people mad, but it was really a no-win situation. If we would have not p done one pass, then someone would have said, you know, hey, you passed the levy, why didn't you do one pass? So I think, um, you know, I feel comfortable with what we did. Um, I, don't, I don't like the idea of backtracking um, decisions, but I think it was. I think there's a time that you can do that. But the biggest thing I wanted to say is, um, I don't know if it's thank you or I'm sorry to Randy, Kevin, Elaine, Lindsay, and Amanda because I know they took a lot of c calls on this and Barb, and, and Barb <laughs> criticisms on this. You know that I get. Pe I get it. I understand what people were saying, but again, I think. We, you know, we did what we felt was best. At least, you know, that was my my feeling for my particular vote. And um, we got some leaves off the street, so you know, it's I, in my mind, it's still better than nothing. So, um, anyway, that's it for me. I want to just quickly say to all the employees, the the staff, and our council, and to our residents too. Again, thanks for making this a great place to live. And um, I, I think we, the, the, the levy shows that and the other things that we've done um, show this. So uh, we do have the need for an executive session. Um, so before we adjourn the regular meeting, we'll, um, we'll I'll take a motion to go into executive session. And we need to state the purposes will be matters pertaining to litigation, also matters pertaining to negotiations with bargaining unit members related to terms and conditions of employment and also compensation. Okay, what Martina said. So is our motion? For, for executive session. Okay, motion by Mr. Bachman to go into executive session. Second, second. by second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. Uh, or we, roll call. Farmer? Yes. Henning? Yes. Gorman? Yes. Merkel? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Bachman? Yes. And Stevens? Yes. So we are now in executive session. Earl, since we're taking a little break here too, I want to tell you thanks again for the pumpkin pie as it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not yet. Not yet.
Okay. Um, is there a motion to return to regular session? So moved. M motion by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Bachman. On a roll call. Farmer? Yes. Henning? Yes. Gorman? Yes. 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 Bachman? Yes. Yes. So we're back in regular session. I'll move for adjournment. Second. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> You're getting as bad as Tim now. <laughs> Motion to adjourn by Mr. Gorman, second by Mr. Merkel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.